Okay, we're back. In today's video, we're just gonna keep on putting parts on this motor, cleaning stuff, and painting stuff, and assembling stuff, and I'm still waiting on an oil pump stuff, but we gotta keep our feet moving, so let's just keep going here. I'm gonna drop a new fuel filter in there. Uh oh. This is not the right fuel filter. Whoopsies. All right, so I need to get the right fuel filter. That's awesome. I'm just gonna put the cap on there for now just to make sure I don't get any garbage down inside there and we'll just keep moving. These guys seal with a rubber packing inside there so you don't have to make them crazy, crazy tight. They just squash that big packing down. I'll show you on the other one. There, so behind these brass nuts, they have that big, thick packing and when you tighten that washer up, it just, or that, the nut up, it squashes that against the fitting. So that's how those things seal. So I spent a huge amount of time cleaning these ECUs up so that they look nice again without getting stuff all into the plugs. So one thing about doing a job like this, cleaning all these parts up when you start as oily as what we did here, it is a huge job. Well, I was getting ready to bolt my water manifold housing on here and I'm missing that seal. That housing bolts on right there and then once that whole bracket is on there, then I can bolt that one on and once that one is on, I can bolt up the alternator and the AC compressor. But this kit is missing another piece and so I gotta order that. Ah. Well, I've been working on this engine harness for quite a while here, just kind of off and on. And as you can see, this thing is a disaster. And that is exactly what happens when you have all these oil leaks all the time on these machines and that oil just soaks on the glue and everything for the tape and stuff and it deteriorates everything way quicker than it should. Now, this one was such an oily mess, I actually put this whole harness in the ultrasonic cleaner and just let it buzz in there to get all the grease and oil and dirt off of here, which typically I would not recommend that you put your entire wiring harness in water. So 
once it came out of there, I've been brake cleaning the connectors and drying everything out and sticking the air gun in underneath there and cleaning, blow, cleaning and blowing and trying to get everything all dry underneath as much as possible. I don't know, it might be less work to just take all the casing off and redo the whole thing, but that just seems like a lot of time. Anyway, I've gone through a lot of brake cleaner and a lot of time. I'm getting close to ready to uh, start recovering this. And I'm gonna take some Canada tape and wrap that thing up again. Uh, hockey tape, hockey stick tape. That's gonna make this harness a lot better again. Right here, I'm gonna take and put some new wire loom on there to give it some protection again. And we're just gonna wrap this thing from front to back. Stepping back inside here for a second to my table of parts that are ready to go on there. Um, this is the injector harness, and you see how nice that is. I already did this one. This one looked just as bad as the other one, but after I put it through ultrasonic cleaner and then cleaned it all up really nice and then retaped it, now it's a really nice harness again. I'm going to do that to that same one outside. And we have a gorgeous day out here. The sun is shining. We don't have a lot of wind for once. Got the wife's go-kart here at the shop today. Oh yeah, I rebuilt that engine too. Uh, 70,000 kilometers ago now, I think. Still runs like a top. Anyhow, I'm going to sit out here in the sunshine and just enjoy this beautiful weather while I work on this harness. Well, just cruising along here, found some bad wires, some bare ones. Wonder if they were having any trouble with whatever sensor that plugs into. Well, there it is, all cleaned up, mostly. Not too sure what to do about this section yet, it's so deteriorated. 
but obviously this is some kind of heat shielding. I'm gonna have to lay it out on the engine and find out where that goes and see if I can get away with just wrapping it with regular Canada tape or if I need to find some kind of tin foil stuff to put on it. But other than that, it's been cleaned and degreased and all the sticky stuff is covered up with fresh harness tape or hockey tape or Canada tape. So that's pretty good. That harness should be good now. Got that one plug fixed. I think that was this one. Got that one fixed with all the bare wires that were in here. So there we go. I think I'm gonna switch gears and go to the back of the engine here to the bell housing and put all that stuff back inside. So I marked all this when I took it off so I can put it back in exactly the same way it came out. This is your flex plate. You have a flex plate if you have an automatic and this engine is out of a truck with an automatic apparently otherwise there would be a flywheel so i've already scuffed this up with the uh, roll lock disc first we've got to put the tone wheel on then the flex plate or i guess that hub first and then the flex plate and then that spacer ring before you put your flex plate on you always want to go through and check all your bolt holes and make sure that you don't have any that are like oblong or anything and you want to be checking all of these areas all the way around for any cracks or anything like that because flex plates do crack this one looks like it's pretty good. It's a little rusty, but other than that, looks good. So let's throw that thing in there. Okay, so for the tone ring, we got a little dowel marked right there. And there's our dowel right there. So the tone ring is gonna go like that. And actually, this is an interference fit, so I'm gonna have to tap that on there. This is your crank sensor. It reads those notches off of there and tells the speed. And down here, you got one spot where it's missing a couple notches. And when that sensor reads that gap, then it knows that where the crank is sitting. So it's a timing mark actually. Okay, let me whack that thing on there. There we go. Next, we got all of these pieces here. All right, so, whoops, that's upside down. Drop the bolt. That hub looks like it goes right about there. Is that going to stay there? Almost wish I had my hammer right now and try and tap that thing on there because it seems like it's a sort of a interference fit too. If this thing will stay in place by itself. There, don't have to worry about that now. Except I didn't get it centered. Smart. That's why they made lineup bars. Let's see if I can straighten this out. Boot there, my bolt fit. Oh yeah, almost like it was supposed to be there. Okay, put that there, grab this guy. I got my blue mark here, my blue mark there for the way I took it apart. Not that it necessarily matters, but that's what I did. So I'm gonna put it back that way, like that. And this one. Like that. Perfect. There, now I'm gonna have to go find out what my torque spec is because I don't remember. 
And today's magic number is 100. I went past that. Let's see if I can torque this without the engine moving or if I have to put my brake on there. No, it's going to turn. All right. Where can I jam that thing? Right up there, maybe. Same as I usually do, just want to jam this bar in here somewhere. Like right there. Let me crank this thing down. It should jam that up there. Ah, ah I need more hands. Uh, maybe if I get a shorter extension. There, that's better. There. Okay, now we'll just walk around. There. He's on there. It's starting to be a pretty nice looking engine. Now as long as it runs good, we got her made. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm having to jump around a lot because I'm getting down to the nitty gritty here and there's always something. Some bolts that I forgot to paint or something that holds me back on this side or the other. I can't tighten those ones up because I can't tighten those ones up because I don't want to tighten this bracket up. It's on slotted holes. I don't want to tighten that bracket until this EGR crossover tube is in, but I can't put the crossover tube in until the intake manifold is put on and the EGR valve put on there. And I don't want to put the intake manifold on yet because I have new clips coming to go on the harness to plug into these to hold the injector harness in place. So I'm waiting on those. That's kind of holding up a whole bunch of stuff here. And then I can't put the ring on the back of the bell housing, that ring, because I forgot to paint it, so it's just drying right now. So what am I gonna do here? I got my new fuel filter, the right one, so maybe we should put that thing in there. How about that? I really don't wanna have the fuel filter get forgotten. That'd be bad. I like to put a little bit of grease around the inside where that O-ring rides when you put your lid on. Okay, pop that guy on there. And make sure you put a new O-ring on before you put your filter cap back on. And with it greased, it should screw together pretty nice. Okay, 